Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim Assalamu alaikum. Salar Khan here and today we start a new chapter of the book and that is chapter number two which is generating stations. So now I'm not maybe I'm not following the order of the book but if you're following it through proper uh, if you're following this playlist so this is in a proper order you do not get to get confused. So the, 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 the name of the chapter is generating stations this is chapter two. Now what is a generating station or a power plant so which generates electricity or where the electricity is being produced so that is known as a generating station or a power plant. Now irrespective of how it is produced of what is the thing that is responsible for producing it. So depending on that then we have uh, kinds. So the first would let's say be the hydroelectric where water is used to produce electricity in thermal the heat is used similarly nuclear so you have a nuclear uh, element used uranium for instance diesel power plant so the diesel is being used to produce electricity and similarly you may have a number of them these are the conventional ones you have renewable solar wind etc so the thing is basically that the the use of electrical uh, the use of electricity has increased a lot <coughs> sorry our dependence on the electrical power has increased a lot so the motive is the motive is to produce a huge amount of water a bulk amount of water and, and, and not only the production number two it should be cheap as well a huge amount of water a huge amount of power is required but at a cheap rate as well otherwise I will have to switch to an another alternative right I would I would have to use gas for instance but no electricity is the major source so you need to do what you need to have a power plant now what do we need for a power plant we have to have we need to have the selection of equipments for a power plant what do we do we do the selection of equipments this is the first motive and the second one is what that this should be cheap and reliable the cheap and reliable service of the of the power plant fine yes so let's say this is a theoretical video in this one in this modern world the dependence of electricity is so much the ever increasing domestic and this and that this is achieved with the help of suitable power producing units known as power plants or power generating units the design of a power plant should be incorporated two aspects number first is the selection and placing of necessary power generating equipment should be such that a maximum return from a minimum expenditure of the working life similarly secondly the operating plant of the operating operation of the plant should be such as to provide cheap reliable and continuous service so generating station bulk electrical power is produced by special plants known as generating stations or power plants simply employs what a prime mover uh, coupled to a generator for the production of electricity so you have what basically ge the, the generating station is a prime mover alternator combination is a prime mover plus alternator so this is in as simple words as you would like it to be you cannot uh, be more simple in the definition of a generating station the most simplest definition will be what that this is a prime mover coupled to an alternator prime mover would be what that would be the turbine that would be the turbine the prime mover for example the steam turbine water turbine etc converts energy from some other form into mechanical energy so the prime mover does what the prime mover the prime this is not the prime minister this is the prime mover so this does what converts energy from any given raw form from any given raw form to mechanical energy to mechanical energy fine yes and then the alternator does what this convert this electrical energy from the prime mover into electrical energy the alternator converts this mechanical to electrical energy 
So this is the outline of it. Fine, yes. The electric energy produced by generation station is transmitted and distributed with the help of conductors to various consumers. It may be emphasized here that a part of the primary alternator combination, a modern generating station employs several auxiliary equipment and instructions instruments several other instruments are also used and what is that that would be governors frequency controllers turbine gates etc now these are the major two the major two you can have plus many others you can have plus for instance governors for instance turbine gates frequency controllers and others so these are some modern designs basically the main objective of ours in this uh, one is not to study this right yes the main objective is to just study an outline of of the the hydroelectric power station the hydroelectric power station so we are going to study a hydroelectric power station in this video hydroelectric power station so a hydroelectric refers to what hydro refers to water so here the energy from water is being utilized to 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 make electricity now you would have two parts basically in this you have the first is you can have storage and in and you are storing water you store you have a reservoir for that and over here you store it at a certain height and you utilize the potential energy of the water so this is the conventional mass storage hydro plant whereas you can also use the runoff river you can also use the runoff energy which means this water is coming for instance a, a waterfall you're not storing it you are utilizing it directly so in that case you are using the kinetic energy of the of the water right yes so water uh, a hydroelectric power station is generally built in hilly areas generally built in hilly areas where dams can be built conveniently and water reservoirs can be formed All right yes so where are they generally built they are generally built in hilly areas where you have sufficient amount of water from rainfall so a general outline is given that in hydroelectric power station water head is created by constructing a dam across a river from the dam the water is led to the turbine so you have water you have water through rainfall or whatever the source is so you store it in a dam at a certain height which means head so the height is head so a head is created now what happens is from the dam the water is led to a water turbine so from here this is led to a water turbine then what happens is uh, led to a water turbine the water turbine captures the energy in the falling water and changes the hydraulic energy into mechanical energy so the turbine does what the turbine basically uh, uh, converts this hydraulic energy hydraulic energy into mechanical energy right yes and then finally what happens is at the turbine shaft so the turbine shaft then drives the alternator the turbine shafts then drives the alternator and the alternator i told you this converts this mechanical into electrical energy fine yes they are becoming very popular because the reserves of fuels coal and oil are depleting day by day yes yes they uh, they have added the importance of flood control storage and irrigation so the dams can also uh, you know act for what for flood control for water storage for other purposes that is irrigation and drinking purposes etc is that fine it is advantages and disadvantages are given over here so if i talk about the advantages first if I talk about the what? If I talk about the advantages, for instance, I would write over here. I would write over here. Advantages. So the first advantage is that it requires no fuel. Water is the fuel. So no fuel. Right? Yes, of course. The second is it is quite neat and clean. Neat and clean because there is no ash, no 
नो स्मोक प्रोड्यूस्ड एटसेट्रा एटसेट्रा वेरी स्मॉल रनिंग चार्जेस बिकॉज वाटर इज द सोर्स ऑफ एनर्जी विच इज अवेलेबल फ्री ऑफ कॉस्ट वेरी लेस रनिंग चार्जेस वाई बिकॉज द सोर्स इज वाटर एंड वाटर इज अवेलेबल फ्री ऑफ कॉस्ट Yes, yes, sir. The fourth is what comparatively simple in construction. Simple construction. We will see in the next video. It has got quite a simple construction. Then it has it, it needs less maintenance, and the less maintenance again corresponds to less running charges. Yes, yes. And. Uh, it could it does not have a long starting time it has a very short starting time it has a very short starting time and i believe i have mentioned somewhere previously as well it's about half an hour or maybe you can also reduce it further nowadays maybe the system is more efficient i told you about half an hour that was uh, you know uh, for for about 20 to 30 years ago or maybe today also this is present i talked about the versac dams so our teachers told us they used to visit there so they said that this takes about half an hour to start right so this is a very short uh, you know uh, a time so this can also be used to uh, this can also be used as a peak load a peak load station so the peak hour the peak occurs you can put it into service instantly normally these are used as a base load stations fine yes similarly it has a robust and longer life it has a very long life long service life but maybe it could go to to 100 years but for instance take it a 50 to 60 years 50 to 60 is is an average right yes sir robust and longer life then it serves many other purposes as well and this i have already told you similarly you talk about advantages you have to talk of the disadvantages as well so i would also have to mention the disadvantages the disadvantages would be few in number but a very happy a very high capital cost this has a very high capital cost okay now why is this having a high capital cost because the machinery is quite big and you need to have a very high uh, what land a very huge land for that yes for water storage and then for installation of the machinery so you need to have a very high capital cost for that the operation is simple okay over here i have told you uh, or not operation is simple so once it is fed uh, set up by uh, by experienced professionals and by uh, good professionals so an ordinary person you could say not an ordinary person but a less skilled person could you know uh, operate that and the system is automated through various schemes scada for instance so the system is automated you do not need to do anything like that but you know a lesser skilled person as compared to a huge experiencedly skilled person is can do the maintenance and the operation purpose the uncertainty of the amount of water uncertainty of the amount of water of course of course this is a disadvantage you have an uncertainty of the amount of water now why is that so basically you rely on what your rainfalls so if the rainfall uh, is not occurring so what will you do for the waterfall similarly you are relations with the neighboring countries for us uh, india the most of the water comes from india over that side so in the recent past we also had you know i believe they had a what hmm, i just don't know but problem let's say so they had a problem on the water issue whatever it is they can you know just shut it off if they just cut down our supply what would we do then yes yes so you need to construct dams and for dams you need money you don't have money again so problem is a little complex anyways skilled and experienced uh, hands are required to build a plant at initial stage of course so i told you this that you have you need to have the skilled and experienced persons for what to build a plant and for after that you at the initial stage you need this after that maybe you not need this and then the transmission cost is quite high 
transmission cost is high why because the uh, the, the the transmission is done through cables through transmission lines through conductors and uh, these are set these are located far away from the load center so you have to put the power uh, uh, get the power to, to the consumer through transmission line so you need to have a transmission system a distribution system so the cost becomes high in that case right yes so these are the advantages these are a number of disadvantages you can also talk about the the choice of site for the hydroelectric power station or you know uh, the the what the choice the site considerations so what would you consider if you are doing what if you are planning to build a dam somewhere so the site consideration include what of course number first is the availability of water the first would be the availability of water what does he say since the primary requirement of hydroelectric pond is the huge quantity of water such plants should be built where adequate water is available of course the next is you should have storage of water so you should have a storage facility as well over there so storage of water this would be the next concern these are wide there are wide variations in the supply this makes it necessary to constructing a dam in order to ensure throughout the year the storage help in equalizing the water flow the storage is done to equalize the water flow or i would say to regulate the water flow to regulate the water flow now what do i mean by regulate so for instance uh, in a high uh, rainfall season my i have a large quantity of water whereas in the low rainfall season i have a less amount of water so similarly the, the amount of water would correspond to the amount of generation of units so i do the storage so that i have an equal amount and i have a regular flow and i have a regular amount of power dispatched from the station right yes so you need to have the storage of water then next is the cost and the type of land cost and type of land the land for the construction of the plant should be available at a reasonable price so first you have to check the price of course and then the bearing capacity of the ground should be adequate to, to, to withstand the weight so you have a bulk machinery so uh, the, the the bearing capacity of the of the land should be such that it should be able to withstand that heavy machinery and finally you have what you have uh, transportation facilities your uh, transportation should be available transportation facilities which means that the, the the site of the dam should be should be such that it is accessible either by road or by rail so for the transportation of what machinery etc etc necessary equipment and machinery so it is clear from the above mentioned factor that the ideal choice of site for power plant is near a river in hilly areas near a river in hilly areas so i have told you over here in hilly areas near a river so this would be a perfect choice over here you will have an adequate amount of rainfall adequate amount of water plus you can have a huge reservoir built over here as well right yes so i believe i finished this video over here i will see you in the next one with the schematic diagram a general outline of the hydroelectric power station till then take care goodbye